Over $1 million is wagered each year across the United States in the bird dog circuit. Wars are waged in each region on who can bag three birds faster than the next guy. There's a lot of things that happen during a tournament. One mistake or you have Here. one little bit of bad luck, you're out. Dogs are bred, bet, and bested from California to New York in pursuit of one prize, top dog. We left a week ago. It takes a tough dog to travel that far. To earn enough points into that elite group and ultimately claim the best hunter-dog combination in the country, you must win your region. That takes effort. If I don't get those points, I'm out. And it's just gonna be one more year of defeat. It takes blood, sweat, and tears, and a world of commitment. Point, point, point. Anything short of winning just isn't acceptable. Ah! If I don't get points on these dogs, it could be catastrophic for the business. We start our journey in the little town of Thorpe, Wisconsin. With a population of only 400, lives one of the most prolific tournament hunters of all time. Craig Steinbach has 61 super major wins, eight World Cups, and is one of the most feared tournament players in the country. I've been playing this game since 1993 was the first time I entered tournament hunting. And ball has it been a ride. <laughs> You know, for years I had to work on the road and this was a hobby of mine. And now I've pretty much made my hobby my business. You know, my dad's out here, the kids, Terry's out there in the kennel. Just getting the dogs water and helping them feed, any little thing that they can do to help clean up and, and make the business roll, it, it definitely is a big help. Craig has a huge passion for the game. There's nights where he will lose sleep. I think that's pretty amazing to be doing it all this time and to not ever lose that. So every time he does have success, it's hugely important to him. Once October comes, it's time to pack up and, and get these dogs rolling. Take them to different spots, different environments. There's things you gotta do and you gotta sacrifice to make the business run and try to put these dogs on top. Just up the road is one of Steinbach's biggest nemesis and just a season of veteran too. With 33 super major wins, Bernie Birkenholtz was Steinbach's partner for 10 years, but they split up in the mid 2000s. When me and Stein started hunting together, he was a terrible shot. If Stein had three shells in his gun, he missed the bird three times. If he had one shell, he only missed it once. But he never hit any birds. As the years went by, he got better. And now he's obviously pretty tough to beat. So I had my short hairs, and they were decent. I was competitive with whiskey, competitive with domino. But then I got Reggie, who just seemed to be a little better than all the dogs that showed up. And me and Stein were tough to beat with him. We had him and we had Stein's throwaway Llewellyn setter, Abby. He got her from a guy that didn't like her because she wasn't good enough. All me and him did is win with her. So we had a pretty good run there for a while. We were pretty tough to beat with our box of dogs. I got six dogs out here. I've had dogs that showed up every week, but I've got dogs that don't show up every week too. I got inconsistency going on. The best dog I think I got right now in my kennel for the future is my dog named Puckett. He seems to show up every week. 
My best chance to get in the dog of the year runoff will be with my pocket dog. I'll give him every opportunity over some other dogs that I have to try to keep him in the race to get in the runoff. Bird Dog Wars is presented by Electronic Shooters Protection, providing shooters with state-of-the-art electronic hearing protection since 1994. Loyal Dog Food, with grain-free choices at an agricultural store near you. Garmin, dog tracking, training systems, and the Verb Action Camera. CZ USA, protect, hunt, compete. And Dogs Unlimited and Thunderstick Lodge. Back at the Steinbach training facility at Fly and Gun Kennel, Craig Steinbach gets ready for training day. The Trigger Time Tournament is coming up shortly, and I know just about everybody is going to be there. It's hot, the cover is thick, and it's green. Yep. I get an opportunity to train these dogs in this heat, whether we're roading, running birds, no matter what it is. But I know that I got to bring these dogs in shape because you never know what time of the day you're going to draw. And if you draw a two o'clock run, you need to get these guys conditioned for that weather and ready for that weather. In the bird dog circuit, hunters have 15 minutes to navigate a 30 to 40 acre field with their dog. Birds are released in field zones called front, middle, and back, and dogs must locate the birds. Hunters must harvest the birds with one clean shot, or they suffer an added penalty to their score. There's a lot of things that happen during a tournament one mistake, you're out. Dogs can pass by birds, but then they have to come all the way back through the field to find them, and that wastes valuable time. I just know I gotta go out there, get my four birds as quickly as I can, and hopefully it's just fast enough to make it to the finals. An official scorekeeper follows each run through the field. A good point for pointing breeds, gunshots, and retrieves and a good flushed bird or caught bird in the flushing division. Hold it! The clock stops at 15 minutes or when all the elements of the run are completed. Competitors with the cleanest, fastest run score win the event. If the run goes full time though, that generally means the hunter takes his dog home empty handed. This is Joey, one of the dogs that were running for high point. There's a dog in particular that I'm running, Joey. I picked him up Wednesday. I gotta take, take him to a tournament here in two weeks. The dog has not been running. The dog has not been on birds. And a lot of times it can be actually a disadvantage not living and not owning the dog that you're actually running for dog of the year. What we're working on, hopefully, is a four minute run. Obviously that doesn't happen every time, but if you can consistently find a bird every minute, every minute and 15 seconds, you're gonna be up there on top. All right, I'm gonna look at this field and we got a wind coming across. If I wanna run this in a four minute time, I have gotta play my wind directions properly. What I'm gonna to wanna to do is send Joey right out of the gate to the left and let him work this first zone. After we get that first Point. bird, then we'll move into our second zone. Here, should be here, Joey. Point! Here. Joey's retriever ain't so good right now. I just got him last week, so um, we're gonna go back to the train retrieve table and start working on some of our retrieve work because if we're gonna beat a four minute run, I cannot waste a couple seconds on a retrieve. He can be a winner. There's not a doubt in my mind he's got the potential. We gotta get him into shape, working on that retrieve, and we'll be fine over at the Birkenholtz kennel. Bernie is getting home from a long, hard day at work. He has to find some time to train his dogs, or the other competitors will gain a huge edge on him. Bernie gets up at five, he goes to work all day. He puts whatever time he has into the dogs, but he, he wishes he had more time, and that does affect your game. Okay, what we have here is a training field. Puckett, you're gonna have to run three minutes in this field to beat Stein back. We're gonna go out, hit the wind here, see what he does. To 
get back on top. I need more dogs. I need to spend more time with the dogs. Stein trains all week, every day, and at the end of the week, he picks out of a dozen dogs, Whoa. which were the four best dogs that week. When you can pick out of a dozen good dogs instead of a few, it's a huge advantage. Ooh. A missed shot in the bird dog circuit will cripple your chances to win. Missing a bird adds a five minute penalty to your final time. So we just did a practice run. Uh, went a little longer than I wanted. Dog danced around a little bit on point, which he shouldn't. He's just, he's rusty, he ain't been out all summer. Whoa, whoa! One thing I absolutely cannot do is double shoot a bird like I did out here today. It's too big of a penalty. So between now and trigger time, I'm gonna shoot some clays, shoot a few more birds, Ooh. get myself sharpened up, get the dog sharpened up, hopefully show up and uh, be competitive. One hundred and fifty miles away in De Pere, Wisconsin, is Region Two tournament hunter R.J. Tooney. R.J. is not new to the game and started in 2002, coming up fast in the ranks. Running a red Vizsla named Rebel, he made his name in the game with eight super major wins. This season, though, he'll run his speedy English pointer, Blaze, for the title. I'm in Region Two. I have to compete against Bernie Birkenholtz and Puckett kind of a pain in my backside when we go out in the field for competition. I would love no better than to beat there. Bernie, Steiny, and end up being dog of the year. Good boy. Blaze and I, we have to be on our game. We're out there training. We're starting now. Boy, his points are a crouch. If he's close to the bird, his belly will hit the ground loud enough where you can hear it. During the day, we'll go out and train a little bit and he'll work his butt off. The trigger time is gonna be an important tournament. We have to get points and we have the guys coming in from Nevada trying to take those points away from me. I have to compete against Steiny, Bernie, and if I don't get those points, Here. I'm out. Blaze is out. Drop. Good boy. Flushing dogs and pointing dogs accumulate points in each region from event entries from across the United States. To be a top dog, a competitor must finish first in the high point dog race in their region. That takes effort. The top regional dogs from six regions get into that coveted final event. The Dog of the Year runoff at the National Championships culminates each March. A Dog of the Year title means everything to these competitors. With the Trigger Time major event coming up this weekend, top tournament hunters from across the country will descend on Traxler's Hunt Club in La Center, Minnesota. Major points will be awarded for the top five placements, and dogs finishing out of the top five will go home empty-handed. And that's an important tournament. We're starting at the beginning of the season. All these points count. On the flushing side, local boy John Turnquist sits in first place in his region. Region one is very competitive, and he needs these valuable points to keep his place in the top dog runoff race. The reason I come to this event, I really need to get the 20 points to stay on top. You gotta be on top, first, second, or third at all these big events to maintain that position because the people behind you are gonna take the points from you. It's competitive. You put money, testosterone, guns, and great dogs, stuff's gonna happen. I need those points. I didn't even expect to be in this position right now with them in first place in points, but he had a great weekend last weekend and it just draws you in and you can't quit. 1,600 miles to the west in Fallon, Nevada, Gary Busboom works his dog patch. Boomer, as they call him, beat Craig Steinbach last season for the top dog of the year prize. And he's back to defend his title. Hatch is a dog that he's as honest as the day is long. I can send him out to a field. If he finds a bird, he'll lock up and he will not move until Whoa. I tell him to move. All of my dogs have been 
either from the pound or rescued that nobody wanted anymore. Luckily, we did win last year's uh, Dog of the Year title, and hopefully we'll be in that spot again to reclaim and defend our title from last year. The competition in, in Region 5 is, is probably as tough as any region that BDC has. Right now, I'm probably 10 points behind uh, Roxy, who is owned by Ron Ricks. Mark Moyle is right in the hunt, and Bing Wesner is, is right there with us too. So I enjoy running against <laughs> Steinbach, Garrity, yeah. Tooney, Tom Glenn. The competition is what spurs this on. It is, it is the best dogs in the country, and you know we've got, we've got some of the best dogs in the country from the West Coast. They love playing against us, and we love playing against them. When we come back, Competitors from all over the country descend on the Trigger Time BDC Major Championship. Who will earn the valuable points needed to move into the lead for top dog? And who goes home empty-handed? Blazer, are you ready? Stay tuned for more action from Bird Dog Wars. Bird Dog Wars is presented by Electronic Shooters Protection. Loyal Dog Food, Garmin, CZ USA, and Dogs Unlimited and Thunderstick Lodge. I can't sleep during these deals. Never been able to for 20 plus years. Get up in the morning, going over the runs in my head. First bird, point, boom. Second bird, point, boom. Third bird, fourth bird, time. Good boy. I think about the run order, the fields, the birds, the wind, everything. Well, it's time to get going. Five miles up the road, Craig Steinbach feeds his dogs in preparation for the event. In the mornings, I like to float a little bit of dog food for Joey here and, and all the dogs for that matter. It's very important, you know, you get into these big trials and you, you got to keep these dogs hydrated. If you don't keep them hydrated, they get dehydrated and they cannot smell nearly as well. So we like to float a little bit of water with our dog food in the mornings. Back at Traxler's Hunt Club, the event staff at the Trigger Time Major prepare for final preparations. Carla Hagland Turnquist is the tournament coordinator and gathers all scorekeepers, event staff, and bird setters for the morning meeting. Carla is the gatekeeper and keeps the event running smoothly. People come here from all over the country uh, to compete at this event. It's a beautiful facility, the fields are fantastic, but most important are the points that they earn at this declared major. Some of these close, close races are getting even closer because of the points that they're earning. It's exciting to see these scores come in and, and see those dog of the year races get even closer. Good bird setters are one of the most important elements of the tournament. We got a big day today. We got a big responsibility. This is how we're gonna plant for the pointing division. We're gonna tuck their heads, pull their feet, put it down, pull on their feet a little bit. All right, this is a real strong, healthy bird. As soon as that hunter gets up there, the bird can fly and get away. The competitors need the birds put down tight. And if they're not, and they're not there, it's gonna be a bad day. Two miles away in field 10, Steinbach is in the blind with Joey. Hundreds of hours of training and a good food regimen have prepared him for this challenge. This dog actually is coming into this tournament, I believe, a few points behind. Um, so if we can get this dog on top, it is gonna help a lot. On the other side of the hunt club, Bernie Birkenholtz prepares for his run with Puckett. It's been hot, I ain't had time to, to do any training, so we're gonna train out in the field, I guess. RJ and Blaze know they have a huge mountain to climb. If we don't get those points, it's nothing but blood, sweat, and tears for nothing. Field 10, do you have a copy? Go ahead. 
I am going to be sending Blaze and RJ at you. 10-4, thank you. Next week, tune into more Bird Dog Wars action, where we'll see if Gary Busboom and Patch can put up the winning score. Go! We have to do good here today to get him into the finals for tomorrow. Will Zach Foss and Bella put up the money run? She's always got a shot. It's just if everything goes right. Or will it be Steinbach and Joey's time to shine? Shoot. Will Bernie and Puckett go home? Or will they take out RJ and Blaze to be major championship winners? Who will secure the valuable points they need to emerge as the points leaders in the BDC Trigger Time Major Championship? All that and more next week when Bird Dog Wars returns.